at World Championships men's road race was yesterday. Very exciting in the last lap or so. Julien Alaphilippe, my absolute hero, uh, a true legend of the sport. And he um, obviously attacked on the last climb and won it solo. Once he was away, there was a chasing group of Wout Van Aert, Hershey, Kwiatkowski, Fusang and Primoz Roglic. Uh, but they couldn't do anything. Uh, no one really wanted to pull Wout Van Aert. It was too many for them to do a proper pace line on the descent. It was ju just a bit, you know, not very cohesive. But anyway, I'm going to go through the power details and show you what it takes to get, you know, a top 10-ish, which is what basically Valkan got um, on the, the World Championships. I'm going to analyze Michael Valkan's power file and then show a quick Koski's last climb to show you the difference because that's where the, that's where the difference was made on this lap. I mean, there was still, you know, 20, 30 riders uh, at the end of the day um, on the last climb. Uh, it was only the last climb that, you know, really, really split it apart. Uh, so this is the this is the file here. Valgrim normally uploads, so pretty good lad. 330 normalized uh, for seven hours is 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 very very good, obviously, but it's something you'd expect from a rider like him. 72 kilos, so that's you know about four watts per kilo. Uh, no, sorry, like 4.8 watts per kilo, I think, just below five watts per kilo. Uh, 4.6 maybe. Uh, so you know that's very very good. Uh, 5,000 meters climb. It was a tough day out, but not maybe as tough as you know in some ways as people could think because. It was just like laps of two climbs the whole time. It wasn't like there was a huge, huge climb. Uh, but anyway, so the 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 main climb was the Galistana and the Mazzolano. Um, the Mazzolano was like really steep at the bottom, and then that was pretty much it. So you can see it was like one one point two k at ten percent. So these first couple laps, you know, they're doing four per kilo on the climb. Uh, that's the Galistana now, which is the last part is really steep. It has about two k at eleven percent. Um, and you know this was. Again, ridden, you know, decently hard, but nothing crazy for these boys, like 5 watts per kilo. That's just sort of like pace where you just like get up there, at, as you can see, 77 cadence, nothing crazy. Um, and, you know, generally that's how World Champions are ridden. The brake goes off the front. You, everyone knows the brake's not going to win. Um, you can see here, Mazzolano, first kilometer, which is the steep part, again, ridden at 5 watts per kilo. So, you know, people are starting to chase now. Um, this, again, was ridden at 5. Galistana was pretty much ridden at 5 watts per kilo the whole day um, until we got until we got serious. Uh, and the Matalana was was pretty similar as well. Uh, but you can just see, you know, there was Piquita started to go up. But, like, this is what I mean. Like, the reason why pro racing is, is really weird and, like, not a, just a power test is because, like, you know, riding, like, for these boys, 5 watts Piquita, that's just, like, tempo zone 2. Um, okay, that's not zone 2, sorry. 5 watts Piquita for this, for Valgren is not. But, you know, if you're a pure GC climber, January 5 watts Piquita could be, like, zone 2 for you. Um, you know, if you're, like, a 60 kilo bloke and you've got a threshold of 400, then, you know, you're doing you know that like like Pagacha, let's say in january is like zone two zone three real low for valgren it's probably like is mid zone three and that's the thing is like he needs the endurance and this is the thing in races that people are like oh yeah but pros like you know i could drop him on a 20 minute climb it's like well maybe you could fresh but they don't need to be able to do that but you can see the power starts come up 5.6 watts per kilo that's probably more like a threshold or something like that um so starting to become harder but not crazy obviously these climbs are a little bit longer um like then the segment itself like if we go from the very bottom to the very top you can see here it's like a seven minute effort but and it's 384 average but you can see here like obviously this is the main part of the climb uh which is why that's i'm just using the strava segments you know as, especially the Matalano. there's a little bit a little bit more uh you know it starts to flatten off at the top and get quite fast but again this is starting to go up to six watts per kilo and this is like i guess the point where you really start to see the men from the boys because obviously six watts per kilo for a lot of people would be, I'd say, above threshold, just slightly. Maybe, you know, I'd say an average world tour rider, most of them could probably do around six fresh-ish, um, no matter like what their weight is. So, you know, it's starting to get to the point where it probably is going to be above threshold for most of these riders. Um, and obviously, it's a, it's a long way in. So we're starting to get to six watts per kilo. Obviously, that's like halfway through the race. So we've already done well, more than halfway. Four hours, you know, ridden at a normalized to 300. That's not, that's not easy again. Um, kilojoules burnt 3,800. That's normally, you know, a pretty decent day out for most people. Um, but this is when it starts to really, you know, shrink down the, the thing. And, you know, the pace just keeps ramping up and ramping up. Uh, you know, there were a couple of attacks. This is the third fastest time up there. Uh, Galisterna, six and a half watts per kilo for four minutes, which on its own is like, I don't know, it's pretty decent for sure. But it's not crazy, is it? Like, you know, mo okay, I, I said this last time, most people do three, seven watts per kilo, three, four minutes, apparently can't. But I'd say... You know, a lot of people can do six and a half performance. Like that's not that special, but it's just the you know the time after time after time, uh, and this is his second fastest time up the Mazzolano. And again, six watts per kilo. 
19k an hour for 10%, which is, you know, pretty quick. I sometimes think the speeds are more impressive. This is his fastest time in the Galistan. He's fourth overall, but that may have changed. Uh, we can look in the Galistan segment um, after we go through his file. And this is when it's like 6.8 was for Kido. This is when Tele Pogacar went on the attack. And this is when, you know, you, Tom Pickcock started to suffer. People like, who you know, who are, who are real, real solid riders, obviously. But they started to suffer because this is like, you know, suddenly getting to the point where no one is like comfortable doing seven watts per kilo for four minutes. Like no one's like, oh, that's like just nose breathing. Like everyone's working obviously to different degrees. Um, I'm talking about World Tour Power Sinuses. Um, but yeah, like no one's like realistically is going to be like, you know, at this and just being like, yeah, it's pretty comfortable. So that's when it really starts to separate. And obviously after this many kilometers as well, it all adds up. Uh, then we've got the Mazzolano, uh, the last time, again, ridden at 6.8 watts per kilo. It seems like if you look at the power file, it's just like someone's telling the riders what to ride the numbers because, you know, they go 5, then five, like 4.4, 5, 5.3, 5.8, 6, 6.8. Um, but obviously it's not. It's just like they are looking at numbers a little bit, but it's mainly just the fact that, like, you know, they, they say, oh, you need to make it hard. Obviously, the French are trying to make it hard on previous climbs. Um, and then this was a, there was a lot of attacks here. Obviously, you can see Bagrand's file itself is, is not actually that spiky you know he obviously hits 692 watts but in general it's it's pretty consistent and that's because he knows that like you know he's riding for Jakob Fuglsang um and obviously he's there I guess in, for the backup of the sprint so he's not he's not going to try and burn any matches and try and attack that's what Jakob Fuglsang's job would do um so at this point you know there was still like 30 people I'd say at the bottom of the gala stand now and this is where the big the boys went this is where it, you know it really did separate and you can see he did 6.6 watts per kilo. So again, like these last three climbs, um, and I think uh, the Masalana here as well. Yeah, so that was only six. And then it went 6.8, 6.8 on the Galistan, on the uh, Masalano. And then on the last time on the Galistano, it was 6.6 uh, .6 again. And that's really when uh, the men and the boys are separated. Those, you know, there's the massive VO2 efforts. Um, and I'm going to say they are massive because I think, I think they, they really did hurt a lot of people. And then the last one was like, oi, full. Um, so obviously you can see Alaphilippe, uh, Kwiatkowski was, you know, they were pretty similar up the climb. So you can sort of, you know, read into, um, the speed, obviously Kwiatkowski doesn't have power, so it's not, it's not really that useful going through it, but you can just see the, 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 the climbing speed, three, 337. And we look at, uh, Michael Valgren, 357. So you put 20 seconds into him. And when you compare it, it's just the top half, the top half here, they were just flying, um, which is, you know, to be expected. So, you know, it predicts Strava 7.4. Um, I've other, seen other suggestions that Alain Philippe did about eight. I'd say, you know, it will be around seven and a half to eight watts per kilo for the three the three minutes, three and a half minutes, which is obviously really, really, really strong. Like that, that's, you know, that's obviously, you know, 30, 40 people can get around a world's, world's course to the bottom of that climb. I think it probably was more like 30 than 40, maybe even 20. Um, but yeah, probably 30, I'd say 30 is a good number. Um, but then obviously the last climb is really when, you know, people could ride the same 6.6 .6 again, like Valgren, you know, there was, there was, okay, it wasn't a huge group, but it was a decent group who could ride a 6.6. .6. Um, but, you know, obviously, you know, people like Carapaz went, blew up a bit too early, Richie Port, people like them. So it's not even like if you're a pure climber or not, it's just who can do, who has that punch at the end of the day, who knows how to conserve all day. I think what's always really interesting. And, you know, if more people had that power data up, it'd be quite interesting to see who is the best at conserving energy, who was, you know, who could get to the final climb. So, if we look at just before the final climb, which is pretty much the deciding point, Vagram did 3.30 normalized. If he, let's say, had a teammate who was the same weight and he did 3.20, then, you know, Vagram's wasted too much energy or whatever like that. Because, you know, 6,300 kilojoules is a big day out. It doesn't matter who you are, 6,300 kilojoules is huge. Um, you know, that's 1,000 calories an hour. And even if you're doing 120 grams an hour, you're only putting in 500 calories an hour. So, you, you know, you have to be aerobically outrageously fit to get around this. Because like you can't be oh, just um, relying on the on the fuel you're putting in, because you know as I said there, even if you're doing the max 120 grams an hour, you still only get 480 an hour. He's burning, you know, close to a thousand. So that's why you have to just be like your threshold has to be so high that you can ride, you know, at such a high um like so you can ride at such a high wattage, but still you know mainly burning fat mainly um aerobic and not you know going into any of glycogen stores too early on um obviously the last ones are and then the run to the line was uh ridden at you know a pretty sedate 330 watts for 12 13 minutes and then if we look at the sprint at the end valgren didn't have much nest got only hit a thousand watts he wasn't in great position i mean when you get like normally he would dust off 
uh, Caruso and Shackman. Um, but obviously, I assume he was a bit a bit cooked. And um, to be honest, he did his job. He got Valgren in the front group. Val, I mean, sorry, Valgren got Fukusang in the front group. Um, so that was all he needed. Uh, and obviously, Kwiatkowski, um, we don't have any power data. But it's still, you know, obviously a very solid ride from him. Um, and, you know, unlucky that he didn't get third. He was just a couple seconds off. Um, off. So it is what it is. If we look at the fastest time up to Mazzolano, uh, we'll see Valgren's second place at the moment. I assume there's not too much distance. Tom Pickcock said he was the fastest with 3.11. I assume that's from training because there's no way he was 14 seconds quicker. Um, uh, so most of these guys are all the same, obviously. And then if we look at the Galastan now, it will be quite interesting to see uh, the quickest person up there as well. I mean, the VAM here is like 2,000 VAM. So just go on 11% climb and ride at 2,000 VAM. So Caruso was technically the fastest, 333. So maybe he started slightly behind. Um, but yeah, I mean, 20k an hour for 11% climb. I mean, people would do that in the UK hill climb season. Like if I did that, I'd be like, oh, that's, that's pretty good to be fair. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going all right. And these boys do it at the end of six hours, six and a half thousand kilojoules of burn. It's unbelievable. Um, but there we go. Um, I think... Yeah, Tom Pidcock just did this in training. Um, so he obviously went out with the boys uh, and whacked it. So pretty impressive from him. But again, you know, that's the difference between fresh and tired. Pidcock got a spat in the end. Good race from him. But uh, obviously, it's different riding the under 23s and the elites. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this little breakdown of Michael Valgren and his power data and all the rest of it. Um, it's been, it was a pretty good World Championships in the end. I think it wasn't most exciting the whole day. But. You know, it, it is what it is. It's the world's so people like to race a bit more conservatively sometimes on the bigger races. Um, but Mikhail Valgren did a great job, 11th place. Um, on a course, I think people might not say necessarily suits him, but obviously he did well. You know, those last three climbs all ridden at six, six and a half, six point eight watts per kilo. Um, is is pretty impressive for him to get around that and only really, you know, get unstuck on the last climb when Alaphilippe is launching at full gas. And when that happens, obviously it's pretty hard to. It's pretty hard to follow him. Um, well, no one could, so I guess it's almost impossible for anyone to follow him. Um, but anyway, just watching.